Greek Observatory public evening tour. I'm Anna Bobikova. Welcome to AB Lifetime channel on mental health. Leak Observatory is located by San Jose on Mountain Hamilton. It's going to take me about two hours to get there. They say that it's very windy and I should be driving very carefully. Actual program going to take from three to six hours and they say it depends on the group interest. Probably if people are more interested, then uh, it's six hours, less interested, three hours. And it depends on weather, of course. What they promise it's going to be there, lecture. We're going to have, a, they say, long walk around. And we're going to see the space and different planets through different telescopes. It is overnight program. It starts at 6 p.m and plus three hours so it's going to be at least until 9 p.m or even until midnight i just arrived running a little bit late it's unbelievable because the road is almost vertical like a 20 miles vertical and i have the rental car and it was very scary to drive know thyself and you will know the universe and the gods this was the inscription at the greek temple in delphi many philosophies and ancient knowledge are talking about similarities of universe and human person learning studying the universe helps to understand yourself or understanding yourself helps to understand the universe. That's why I'm talking about this particular event, which was wonderful in observatory. Of course, you are closer to the universe, closer to the space, and you can get more knowledge and understanding about yourself and universe. Neuroscientists very often compare the structure of the brain to the structure of the universe. They say that we have much more narrow connections in the brain than the stars in the universe. Any self-development I take as a love to self. They sell the tickets to this event very fast. In the beginning of May, I bought the last ticket to the end of August. And I just uh, checked the website and I see that they, uh, all the tickets for the evening tours already sold out for 2018. I think they are doing it only for half year, for the spring months, probably five, six months. It is about an hour away from uh, San Jose. They say that it is very windy. It could be very windy when you go up on the mountain. <laughs> Don't be afraid of that. When I came, there was no wind. Of course, uh, drive very carefully. On the way up, it is light time of the day. And when you drive back, it is completely dark. So be very careful. And there are animals in the mountain too. It is owned by University of California. In the beginning, we had maybe one and a half hour or two hours walk, like excursion. We saw the, the whole environment there. The Leak Observatory exists at the height of 4,200 feet. We had about 30 people in the group. Usually from that height you can see San Francisco, but at that day the smog from the fires was very thick. We couldn't see San Francisco. Our guide mentioned mountain lions and rattlesnakes there. I haven't seen any. It's hard, only, honestly, it's hard to believe that they have rattlesnakes at that height, but I don't know. During this one and a half hours of excursion at the territory, they explained everything about the life of, of astronomers there too. They used to have there about 60 people working for them there and with families, with children. They even had the school there. And right now they have 20, 25 people working for them. The, most of them live at the night schedule because astronomers working with the sky, right? They need to have dark sky. That's why you can see there all the signs like be quiet at the daytime because people are sleeping there. They mentioned about five modern active telescopes working at this moment there and several historical ones. After excursion at the territory, 
We had a break. They do not have restaurants there, but they have gift shop where we could buy some snacks. We had a break and it was beautiful sunset, which we watched from this mountain. Gift shop has good souvenirs there. Afterwards, we had the lecture on history of Lick Observatory and very unordinary, the founder of Lick Observatory, James Lick. He is very interesting, cool guy. I'd like to learn more about him. Since 1888, Leak provided for astronomers these telescopes at this location. We've seen Mr. Leak was buried right there at Leak Observatory at the basement, so we saw the, his grave there. When it got dark, we were able to observe the objects through the telescope Great Leak Refractor. We had to wait until it get dark, so that's why it was the lecture prior to that. It got dark and then we could use the telescope. In the dome, they actually opened the part of the dome. The telescope can directly be looking toward the objects. They mentioned about some objects, they were 22,000 light years away. This last part of the program was the most, I would say, magical. It brought me back to my childhood, you know, when you have a group of people and you are all together at the, some sort of dark place and this sky full of stars, which we've, we've seen here at the Lick Observatory through this dome opening. Of course, at the such height, which is 4,200 feet, you feel like you are inside of sky. You know, when you went out of observatory, you could see the stars around. Airplanes fly almost at the level of your eye. <laughs> also, at that moment, the moon was almost full. It was three days prior full moon, so it was very, you know, big and you could enjoy the view. For me, the full program took five hours. And as I mentioned, I left a little bit prior the end of the program because there were probably half of the group still stayed there and they were planning to watch two more objects. And it was enough for me and I had to still to drive back two hours and I start to feel like I'm getting sleepy. So I decided to drive back. It was wonderful excursion. I would like to repeat such an experience. Thank you for watching. Namaste.